What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial we're going to be talking about cost calculation in Revit. I'm going to be sharing these 5 tips on cost calculation, how to set the correct currency inside of Revit, how to add a correct price to all of your components and then to how to do the same thing to all of your materials. After that I'm going to be sharing with you how to create a regular schedule and then also a material takeoff schedule. So you will have a basic understanding on all of the aspects of cost calculation tools inside of Revit. And if you want a more comprehensive course on this topic, I have a one hour course on this on my Patreon, first link in the description. There you can find all of my advanced courses as well as all of my Revit project files. Also, before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make Revit tutorials like this almost every day. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see over here, I've got a simple house in Revit. We're got, we've got some basic elements. And the first thing that I like to do, because it's usually never set up inside of the Revit template, this was made in the architectural template, and it isn't set up, and that's the correct currency. So for that, you need to go to the UN, or project units, so just type in UN and here we have the currency option. Now here what I like to do is I like to use the symbol for euros. You can also do dollars if you want or any of these. You have pounds here and, and uh, a bunch more. So if you want to use any of these currencies you can. I'm just going to go perhaps with the dollars for this one. Also, you have an option to uh, suppress tailing zeros. I usually leave this unchecked. I like those zeros. And you can use digit grouping. This I particularly like. What this basically means, and let me just check it, click OK, OK again. So let me just go in the floor plan just to illustrate what that means. So that basically means if you have perhaps, uh, let's just go here to annotate and let me just place some text. So if you have, I don't know, like $2,000, it's actually uh, going to put a little uh, comma over here so it's a bit easier to see. Now that's really, it's not really that useful when you have $2,000, but when you have some prices in the millions, it's going to have it a bit more readable. Okay, so the next step is going to be all about adding the price tag to your components. So when you select some component in Revit, for example, this window, you can go here into edit type and you can get all of the information on that uh, family or component. And here under the identity data, you're always going to have some options and here, the most important one for this tutorial is the cost option. And here, for example, for this window, let's say it's $300. You can just type in 300 over there and there we go. It's $300 and here are those tailing zeros that we talked about. So you can add a price like this, so you just hit apply, okay. So what you need to do is you need to go through all of your components. So let's go to the second window, find identity data, go to cost, let's say this one's 150 check out, hit apply, OK. Then if you have some uh, different types of windows, for example, this small window, let's say that's only 100 bucks. So I'm just going to type in here 100. So that's how you add a price to all of your components. Once you've added the price, then we can move on to the next tip. And that's how to add price to materials. So for example, here we have some walls and let's look at this exterior wall. And if we go here into edit type, and into structure, uh, you can see over here oh, we've got the materials used and here you can actually add price to all of the materials. So for example, the structure material has these concrete masonry units. So I'm just going to go here into edit and again, there in the families, it was identity data. Here it's just identity and we have a cost option. Now, usually this cost would be for every square meter of the wall or something like that or every cubic meter. So just keep that in mind and just add a price of that, uh, that, that of that particular element. So in this case, if it's maybe one square meter of this wall material, I'm just going to type in maybe a hundred dollars for that. And then if you click out, yeah, that's the cost and you can hit apply. Okay. So you can do basically that for all of the other materials. Let's see what else do we have. Maybe this rigid insulation. Maybe we can change that. So you can go to identity data for cost. Let's go with 20. Hit OK. OK again. 
apply okay and that's how you change the cost of each individual material so why did we change these costs well we want to create a schedule that includes all of the costs of each material so let's look at the windows first and we can move to the walls later on so to create a schedule you need to go over here and here we have a, a section for schedules now you can either right click and go to new schedule quantities or alternatively you can go here to view find schedules and find schedule quantities here we can create a simple window schedule so let's go here to windows hit ok and then i'm just going to go with a family and type and then cost and then i can just hit ok and there we go we've got our schedule now if you want to have the final cost of all of the windows so here we do have all of the windows but let's say we want to have like the final price of all of the windows for this building you can go here to uh, sorting and grouping first so I like to sort by family and type also I like to add grand totals and then for formatting just go here to cost and here for calculation go to calculate totals hit OK and there we go so that's $2,200 for all of the windows used inside of this building and Revit gives us that information also keep in mind that if you find windows from maybe some manufacturer that manufacturer may add the price to the window uh, when they send you the Revit family so you might already have that field all taken care of if not you can call up the manufacturer and just ask for to give you a quote on that price okay moving on the final tip and that's how to do material takeoff schedule so that's a bit different so you can create a schedule for components and then also for materials so the second one is material takeoffs so that's over here under view schedule material takeoffs and then you just open up that menu and then let's search for example for walls because we've already set up the materials there so just go OK now here we need to add one more field so if you go here to uh, to walls let's go to family and type load that in let's go to cost we need that that's the important one and also we need some other parameter uh, that we're going to be using for calculation and let's calculate by area so load that in also you need to put in a material so yeah instead of this cost I, I guess I made a mistake instead of this cost we need an actual material cost this will be this would be a regular cost but we do need the material cost and then the area so that's what's the important part okay we can also add the material name I think that's useful to have so I'm just going to move that up a bit okay there we go maybe one more okay so this is the important part so these are all the fields that we need and then when we go here to sorting and grouping we can sort by family and type and then sort by material name and also let's add the grand totals for formatting for cost let's uh, we don't really have calculation under this field but that's okay uh, we're going to be talking about that a bit later on what we do need is to go to fields and create a new calculated parameter so what this parameter is going to give us is the final cost so just type in final cost and then scroll down and go with currency and then we're going to be having a formula so the formula will be area times material cost divided by one square meter to normalize the units so you just get these three little uh, buttons or three little dots you go to area then you do a little asterisk sign then you go again here to material cost okay and then divide that by one meter square okay one square meter just hit OK and that's the final cost now for formatting for final cost we can add the calculated totals option hit OK and there we go we've got our schedule now it might be a bit of a long schedule just because we have so many walls but here as you can see for the materials where we've added the price like this concrete masonry unit as you can see we've got all of the prices and then it's calculating basically 33 square meters by hundred dollars and that's three thousand three hundred uh, dollars uh, six is because it's probably not rounded off at 33 there's probably 33.0 something so that's how we get all of the cost now of course you would need to add all of the cost information for each of these materials that's 
existing in the building and then finally here you would have the final cost so this is the final cost only using the uh, only using uh, the cost that we've added but if we were to add uh, all of these cost fields and you can do that even here in the schedule so here for them proofing you can say I don't know 10 bucks and then it's going to change all of the fields for them proofing and it's going to add all of the prices and as you can see the price will jump so once you finish all of the material pricing the the price will probably be much higher okay anyways that's a quick rundown and quick five tips that's that are going to help you with starting off your cost calculation inside of Revit again as I said if you want a more comprehensive one hour course on this topic where I cover basically everything you need to know on cost calculation or on tools for cost calculation that come with Revit check out my course on that as well as all of my other Revit advanced courses up on my patreon first link in the description okay so that's pretty much it for today's tutorial thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this tutorial and if you have any questions comments or suggestions for any future tutorials make sure to leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day